When it comes to investing in retirement, one of the things that really jumps out at me is that the need for dependable, reliable, consistent cash flow for income into your portfolio takes on a much more important role than it does previously when you're in the portfolio building phase. When you're no longer working, for example, you don't have a paycheck to rely upon. You can't sort of fall back. And if you have investments that miss some dividend payments, you can't just say, oh, I don't worry about it. I've got some cash flow coming in. That part of your life is now behind you. So you rely more on the investments and the consistency, like I say, of the holdings that are inside your portfolio. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong here. I believe that regardless of what stage you're at along the investing journey, having assets that both appreciate in value and provide income is a very important element of a good portfolio, but certainly there's a higher level of prominence and importance that this takes on when you are actually retired. I would like to thank the sponsor for today's video, which is Harvest ETFs. And in the video today, I'm gonna to design a portfolio that I think is ideal for a retirement type scenario. I'm gonna look at five of the ETFs that Harvest manages and they are designed specifically to A, have a higher yield than you would normally get otherwise. They also simplify management of a retirement portfolio if you're the type of person who likes to use ETFs as opposed to going out and managing a portfolio of uh, individual securities. That's not for everybody out there. I would like to take just a moment and talk about the higher yields that you're going to get in this harvest lineup of funds. We're talking about yields of seven, eight, even north of 9%. And you might wonder, well, how do they do this in this environment we live in today? How do they generate such a high level of yield? with consistency. Each of the five funds that we're going to look at today uses what's called a covered call strategy. And this is a strategy that the portfolio managers can use to generate income, to generate a yield higher than you'd be able to if you only held the underlying stocks directly in the portfolio. A little known fact out there is that Harvest ETFs is actually one of the largest option writing firms in the entire country here. In this case, they use the covered call strategies and it does two main things. One, as I mentioned, it increases the distributions, it increases the income into the portfolio. The strategy also provides some downside protection in a volatile market just because of the mechanics of how covered calls work. A call option is an agreement between two parties. And what it does is it gives the buyer of the option the right but not the obligation to buy the stock, the underlying stock, from the seller of that option. The buyer pays a fee for that right, and they have a determined period of time, a very specific period of time, that they have to exercise that option if they choose to do that. Now, critical to the construction of these portfolios, the seller, and in this case, the ETFs themselves are the seller of these rights. Regardless of what happens to the stock itself, the seller gets to keep that fee, so the ETF generates the cash flow, the extra income into the portfolio, and they are able to keep that fee regardless of what happens to the stock down the road. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a moment. I wanna give you an example that hopefully will sort of illustrate the concept of this covered call or of the call option. Imagine that you have a car and you want to sell it. You figure you're willing to sell it for $50,000. Well, you find someone who's interested in buying the car and they come and they say, yeah, I'll buy it for $50,000 but I just need to check. I need a little bit of time to think about that. So you agree that you will give them 30 days, for example, to uh, make up their decision. Now you're not just gonna do that uh, for nothing. So you say in order for, uh, to, for them to have the right to come back during those 30 days and do that, you're going to charge them a fee. And in the uh, options business, that's called the premium. Now at any time during these 30 days, that person can come back to you and say, I wanna buy your car and you've guaranteed them that you will sell it to them for that $50,000. However, if the 30 days goes by and they haven't exercised that option, and that's often what happens in the case of covered call option writing when it comes to stock, uh, to stocks, they walk away, the contract is now in, invalid, it's, it's finished, you get to keep both the stock that you own and you get to keep the premium that was paid. And that's the underlying concept behind how this works. So what happens now if the price goes up during that same time period? And if we use the car as the example, we know that over the last year or so, there has been a huge increase in the value of used cars, predominantly because of this chip shortage and there, there's just not many of them out there. So if that $50,000 car, the market value had increased it during that time, let's say to $60,000 or heck, even $70,000, you can be assured that the holder of that option is gonna to come to you at some point during that 30 days and say, I wanna buy that car from you. Again, you're obligated to sell them for $50,000. They're gonna do that because even if they don't need the car, they can now take it, go to the open market and sell it for 60 or 70 and make money that way. Now, what happens if the price drops? 
it wouldn't make economical sense for someone to come in and buy an asset and pay you $50,000 if the price has dropped and they can go out on the market and buy that now for 40 or for 30 or whatever the price may be. In that case, as I mentioned, the ETF, us, the seller, we get to keep that fee and the owner, the, uh, the purchaser of the option just goes along their merry way and it's the end of the deal. It is important to note here that the strategy that Harvest uses in their covered call ETFs is a little different from a lot of the other uh, covered call ETFs out there. The main difference is that they limit the uh, percentage that they will write on any indi individual security to 33%. So in other words, if they own stock A, they're not gonna write calls on the entire 100% of that stock. They cap themselves out at that 33%. The relevance of that is this. As I mentioned earlier, using the car analogy, if during that 30 days or however the length of that contract is, if the price goes up, you can assure that that will be called away from you. So one of the limitations to a covered call strategy is that it does limit your upside potential during the time. And if you're writing regular calls, you'll that will come into play uh, from time to time. The strategy that Harvest uses though, is they leave 67% of each fund at a minimum that is still uh, subject that still will participate in the growth of the market. So it's a really nice balance between generating the income that the covered call strategy can and still allowing for upside potential that you don't get in some of the other strategies that use these covered calls. Let's just take uh, some time now and build that portfolio I spoke of using five of these funds. The first ETF that we're going to look at today is the Harvest Brand Leaders Plus Income ETF. The ticker of this is HBF. I mentioned at the outset that a couple of characteristics we're looking at for income and retirement is both predictable and reliable. And certainly a fund like this checks both of those boxes. In fact, when I look at the types of investments that I have in my own personal portfolio, they mirror uh, the types of companies that we have in here. And, and again, those characteristics, when you look at the actual holdings of the fund, you're going to basically see 20 of the top brands from around the world. Companies like McDonald's, Visa, and Microsoft. Now, when I think of McDonald's, I think of hamburgers. When you think of a company like Visa, what do you think of? Well, probably credit cards comes to mind. Or when you think of a company like Microsoft, the first thing that's going to come to your mind is probably some form of software here. The point is that each of the companies in this portfolio are indicative. They're representative of the industries that they operate in. They're the types of companies that are synonymous with whatever they're selling or whatever service they're providing. They do have uh, staying power. They have the ability to thrive even in volatile markets. And of course, when you're looking at uh, income and retirement, one of the concerns you have is you don't want to buy a source of income that is going to stop. So you want to have companies that have that staying power. Things like a brand recognition. When when the going gets tough out there, or you know, even in good times, but especially in rougher times, people feel more comfortable. Investors, consumers go to those names that they feel uh, secure with. That's one of the assets or one of the values of having companies like this. Another advantage of having companies that are stable and, and, and global brands like this is the fact that they have strong pricing power. In other words, we're seeing, for example, inflationary times right now, and a lot of companies that didn't have the stability, don't have the consistency to be able to reprice their product or their services to keep pace with the inflationary times we're in, things like input costs, um, they can struggle mightily, whereas you have these brand name companies and they can actually you know, keep pace. They can raise those prices without losing a whole chunk of market share, again, contributing to stability. Another key when it comes to retirement income is the dividends that these underlying companies uh, provide themselves. In the case of this fund, in 2021, 16 of the 20 funds that were held in the account and in, in the ETF actually raised their dividend and the average was 9.6% during the time. So that's a very, very healthy increase in the cash flow that of course is so important. It's what we're looking for here. Uh, the date of this filming right now, the fund pays a distribution of 7.5% and that's paid out on a monthly basis, which I know a lot of viewers here like. When you look at the current holdings of this fund, I'm pretty sure you're going to recognize most, if not all of them, and immediately you're going to identify the strength that they hold in their respective industries. Like I said, they are leading brands in their own spaces. As you can see by the sector allocation details, the fund is very well diversified across sectors, and that obviously should help in smoothing out the ride that we're on here as in equity investors. 
The ETF has provided great long-term returns, as this table shows, and it has participated because it is an equity-based portfolio in the recent market volatility that we've seen across the board. From a cumulative market price perspective, this chart shows two lines. The bottom line, the blue line, shows the actual asset value, the net asset value of the ETF. When you factor in the dividends, as you see in the upper line, the gold line, you can see the huge difference in the value added that the importance of the dividend strategy, of that covered call strategy that they bring to this particular type of a fund. In retirement, you wanna be confident in your core holdings. And this is an ETF that to me provides a lot of comfort uh, in that uh, endeavor. The second ETF we're going to look at today is the Harvest Healthcare Leaders Income ETF, the ticker is HHL. And I just talked about stability and the healthcare industry really is where you want to be when it comes to stability. It's a growing industry. Uh, that's not gonna change obviously with an aging population. Uh, the need for healthcare service is just going to grow. If we look here in Canada, at our age pyramid, you will see that there's a massive percentage of the population between the ages of 55 and 65 today. And these people really, myself included, are just entering into the highest healthcare needs of our lives. And this is only going to increase. I will also note that this is the largest healthcare equity income fund in all of Canada. And when you look at some of the names of the companies that this portfolio owns, you're gonna recognize a lot of them. Again, they are certainly global leaders in the space. The fund itself invests primarily in the US, but remember that the companies that we're buying here have a large global presence as their services, their products are used uh, around the world from a sector perspective. Pharmaceuticals, healthcare equipment and supplies, and biotechnology do make up the bulk of this portfolio. The fund is paying a very attractive 9.0% current yield. And like I say, all of the funds we're covering today pay monthly distributions. Before I wrap up the discussion of this industry, I do want to take a moment to just sort of highlight a key characteristic. And when it comes to the reliability of income, uh, the healthcare system, the healthcare sector is a permanent and non-cyclical sector. So it, it's not going anywhere. People don't choose to get sick or people don't choose with, if they need medication or not. That's something that uh, we are here to live with. And in an aging population, and especially when you look at countries like China and you look at countries like India, with both the population, but also the increasing wealth in these countries, higher expenditures for things like healthcare, robot assisted surgeries, new medical devices. And when you look at the development of new drugs, this ensures a really strong growing and a permanent demand for these services. So again, as a, uh, as a retired income investor, that provides me with a lot of comfort that we're in secure space here. When we look at the returns on this fund, we're gonna see again, solid, attractive, longer term numbers with recent volatility in line with the markets. This chart will once again highlight the value of having those dividends with the net asset value roughly uh, maintaining that $8 or so level. And then you see the benefit that the income brings you when you look at the gold dotted line above. And the bottom line is this, if we're looking for security, we're looking for predictability of, of income, this is a space that I think you really, really need to be in as an investor. Next one, let's look at the Harvest Equal Weight Global Utilities Income ETF. The ticker here is HUTL. And this is a space very much like healthcare where we look at things like uh, the needs that we have on a daily basis. We think of things like water, we think of natural gas, we think of electricity. The products that we use in our home on a day-to-day -day literal basis, then we think of, not only do we use them, we think of utility companies that have to get these products from wherever they're produced or discovered um, into our homes. This ETF invests equally in 30 of the world's largest utilities and communications companies. If you're a Canadian, you're gonna recognize names like BCE, uh, Fortis, Telus. Probably uh, everybody watching this video sends a monthly check to somebody on this list here. They're obviously gonna be right at the top of your mind. When it comes to utility companies though, there's something that a lot of people don't even think about. It's often overlooked. To me, this is a huge part of this sector. And this is something that is sort of happens behind the scenes almost. I'm talking about things like mega projects. So you're looking at things like big pipelines, you're looking at telecommunication systems, power plants. These are a huge part of the business that most of these companies in this portfolio do. Uh, the kicker to this type of an, uh, of an investment though, is that these projects aren't one and done. First of all, they're multi-year projects typically. So the, the dollar value of creating this infrastructure is huge. 
But in most cases, the companies that create these companies and build these dams, for example, sign multi-year and in fact, many cases, multi-decade contracts to provide the maintenance uh, for these. So when I'm talking about predictability in a portfolio like this, uh, you look at this type of an investment that not only has great yields in the portfolio, but they also have that, that predictable income from these large multi-decade uh, contracts. That's exactly what I'm referring to here. Now, from a yield perspective, HUTL currently has a yield of 7.57%. Again, paid monthly, just like all of the other funds that we're looking today. Another feature of this fund is its diversification, not only across the sectors, but also you can see it has strong geographical diversification as well. Diversified telecommunications, electric utilities, oil, gas, and consumable fuels make up the bulk of the portfolio. And you can see where else they have invested here. This fund is one of Harvest's newer fund. Its inception was only back in 2019, but since then it's offered pretty consistent returns. Most importantly, in a case like this, you're looking at stable returns, which is something that the utility sector can provide that's not available in a lot of the other sectors out there just because of the nature of how they do their business. You can see once again on the cumulative market price chart here, the value that those distributions bring to this type of a company. The fourth fund that we're going to look at in today's video is the Harvest Canadian Equity Income Leaders ETF. The ticker is HLIF. Now, obviously, as Canadians, we're familiar with a lot of Canadian companies. Unfortunately, we really do have some of the strongest companies uh, around the world right here. When we think of specifically, for example, the financial sector, and we think back to 08, 09, during that financial crisis, the Canadian banks really shone during that time. They jumped out as being, if not the, one of the most stable financial banking systems um, in the world. We also have a very, very strong, healthy, vibrant energy sector, as most of you know. I think of companies like Enbridge, I think of TC Energy, I think of Suncor, just as an example of some of the companies that this portfolio holds that we can be proud as Canadians that they are a, you know, part of our economy here. The fund itself holds 30 of Canada's best companies from a variety of sectors. And the key for the holdings in this portfolio are the attractive dividends that they pay and the, the, the stability of the dividends and also the longevity. When we look at Canadian utilities as an example, it is not only paid, but it has increased their dividend all the way since 1972. So we're bumping up against now a 50 year time period where they have increased their dividend on an ongoing basis. And there are a number of other companies uh, in the portfolio with a very, again, very long, attractive, stable dividend histories as well. The fund currently is paying a 7.5% distribution, uh, monthly of course, and when we compare this against other investments, we see this benefit. It really shines through the benefit of their covered call strategy that the fund utilizes. If we look at the right side, that's HLIF showing its current dividend. If we think of the portfolio itself, without those covered calls, we see that that distribution drops to in the 4% range. And then we compare that to the S&P 500 or the TSX or the TSX 60, and we can see the significantly improved cash flow that we're going to be getting uh, by investing in a fund that uses this type of strategy. So what is inside the fund? Well, as you can see on the screen now, it holds some of the strongest companies that Canada has to offer. Uh, you shop at these stores, you bank at these banks, these companies heat your homes, and they provide a lot of regular stability to our economy. The top sectors that are represented in the fund are probably what you'd expect, uh, financials, utilities, energy being the top, but it's not overly, overly weighted in these sectors. If you look down the list, there's significant exposure to other sectors as well, and it rounds out the diversification of this type of a fund. Now, this ETF is brand new to the uh, Harvest lineup. It only launched in June of 2022, so there aren't any published returns um, on this fund at this point. The final fund that we're going to look at today is a complement to the four funds that we've already looked at. It's the Harvest Tech Achievers Growth and Income ETF. The ticker is HTA. Now, I said I'd be looking at building a portfolio, and a portfolio is always a, a mixture of different types of investments. And so far, we've looked at these high-yielding, stable industries. For the most part, they provide dividends, they provide those stable cash flows into our portfolios. I also want to look at how we can beef up the return overall on these by adding some more growth to the portfolio. Again, um, not as a standalone investment when we think of tech, but uh, how the role that tech can play to complement the other thing that we've done here. I think that it's important 
to hold this type of, of, of an asset inside of a portfolio, um, as long as it's done obviously in moderation. When we look at this space in general, we look at so much change that has occurred uh, that we, we see a, a, a larger amount of volatility than we would expect to see, for example, in a utilities uh, type fund. But the potential that we have in this area is something that you really shouldn't ignore. And I've always marveled at the ingenuity of the human mind. And although we've seen recently, obviously, in the tech space, a, a significant pullback, this is the way that an industry grows and it matures. And there's a lot of weeding out. I think back to uh, the tech crash so many years ago now, where a lot of companies were sort of capitalizing on the growth in the space, but they weren't good quality companies in the first place. And that's always a key to building a, a portfolio that has longevity. When I think of what's about to come in this portfolio, I think of things like the blockchain, I think of artificial intelligence, I think of machine learning and everything else that's coming. Uh, we want to look at a way that you can say who will participate, which types of companies will participate in these, the Microsofts of the world, the, the Apples of the world, and differentiate between those and almost like the, 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 the hangers on, uh, which won't even be around probably in 10 years or so. The Tech Achievers Growth and Income Fund holds 20 equally weighted large cap global tech companies and it overlays, like I say, this covered call strategy. And if we look through a list of these companies, you're going to see some of the world's largest mega cap companies. A nice mix of companies also that capitalize on technology to make themselves into market leaders. From an income perspective, we often think of this space, of the tech space, as having low distributions, low dividends, and that is often the case. But this ETF is currently paying a yield of 9.41%, and that is stellar for this particular space. And that's possible, of course, because of the covered call overlays that the fund uses. The portfolio is well diversified, but it definitely has a higher percentage of the fund in semiconductor and in the software space. When we look at the returns, this is where you're going to see how this type of a fund, a more growth oriented fund, and when we marry it with the four first funds that we looked at, it really has a role to play. It has very strong returns over the longer term. And of course they participated in the most recent market pullback, but overall this type of a fund will boost the overall return of the portfolio using the five funds that we've covered off today. If you want a true portfolio of ETFs, I've given you some ideas here of how you can construct and marry some of the Harvest ETFs to provide that consistent, reliable retirement income for you. If you're not familiar with the Harvest line of funds, I will provide a link in the description below. I would invite you to check out their website, learn more about them. If you are looking for additional information on investing in general, of course, as always, I will invite you to visit our Investing Academy. Again, the link will be below. Again, a huge shout out, a huge thank you to Harvest ETFs for sponsoring today's video. I do thank you for watching the video and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video.